name is Lavinia and I'm moderating the event on behalf of Job City. Uh, once again, for those of you who just joined, uh, we have here with us Christina. She's the Associate Director um, of Admissions at Fordham Gabelli. And uh, of course, uh, now I'll, I will leave the floor to you, Christina, and we can take all the questions after the presentation ends. Thank you all so much. Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Lavinia. And hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, as Lavinia mentioned, my name is Christina Sikowski, and I'm currently located in New York City. So hello from the Big Apple. We're going to be talking about how do you discern and choose between an MBA and MS program. So I'll be kind of utilizing what we know best, which is my programs here at Gabelli. Um, so we'll kind of try to create more of like a generalized understanding of what is it that separates the MBA and the master's and who is it best fitted for? So um, we'll jump in. There's a couple of different areas here that we will discuss in terms of combining or comparing, I should say, a full-time MBA versus a specialized master's. So with the full-time MBA, most of the time, students that we're looking for um, are early career starters with some leadership experience. So typically you have had at least three to five years of full-time work experience. So that does not include internships. We're looking for someone who has had um, that full-time experience and perhaps you've had the experience of managing people, managing projects or managing budgets. Um, it may not necessarily have that title just yet that reflects those leadership values and skills that you bring to the table, but perhaps that's what you're working toward. So that's often what we see in our full-time MBA students. We also see, as I mentioned before, uh, three to five, three to six years of work experience, and that does um, not include the internships. And of course, something to keep in mind when you're pursuing a full-time MBA versus a specialized master's program is that this is going to be a larger financial investment um, for the MBA student. The program is two years in length. And because of that, it is a little bit more expensive than our specialized master's programs, which typically take place between three, um, three semesters, two to three semesters of your time. So a lot less time, a lot less financial and time investment in these specialized masters. Now, typically our specialized master's students are what we consider to be pre-professional. So you haven't quite had a lot of full-time work experience. You're nowhere near the uh, three to six year uh, range and threshold that we look for for a full-time MBA candidate. Instead, perhaps you've had um, entry-level positions and maybe you just began your couple months in, perhaps you've had some internships throughout your undergraduate career, but nothing that has been completely full-time that is really giving you that leadership experience as well as expertise. So maybe you are still trying to navigate, you know, different routes and different areas of a certain industry or certain practice in business. Uh, perhaps you are maybe gaining some skills here and there and responsibilities, but not quite having solidified leadership uh, responsibilities delegated to you in your position. So as I mentioned, that work experience, typically our average incoming MS student is coming in with less than one year of work. So that's full-time working experience. And because the uh, program is shorter in duration, that typically does mean that there is a smaller financial investment. In terms of career goals, now we talk about that investment of time and that investment of money to um, you know, pay for that cost of attendance for each of these programs. Keep in mind that with a higher cost of attendance and with that higher investment, we also have a higher return on those investments as well. So with a full-time MBA program, you're typically preparing for uh, leadership roles. So having that leadership uh, title is going to be something you're looking for after uh, you've completed that MBA. There is a broad expertise across business. So you're not necessarily learning one particular area or industry and business. You're learning general advanced business practice and really how to strategize and manage um, operations and offices across those different areas of business as well. You're also expanding that professional network. So with the MBA program, you're also going to be in a cohort surrounded by other students that have had that full-time working experience that you've had as well. We also bring in different guest speakers, alumni, as well as different opportunities for you as an MBA candidate to really ensure that you are making the most of your time here and expanding that network with um, individuals who are really going to create a positive impact for you too. 
Now with the specialized master's program, as I mentioned before, this is a smaller investment of your time. And the program itself in terms of uh, content and curriculum is going to be um, really tailored to a specific area of business. Um, with the exception of our MS in management program, which is more of like a broad-based business program, the other programs that we offer in our specialized master's suite are going to really pertain to specific skills and building knowledge in a particular area of business. Um, one great example of this is our MS in professional accounting program. Now, in comparison to the MBA program, the MS in professional accounting is going to be a lot of accounting classes, advanced accounting, financial statement analysis, taxation, all courses that are going to be very highly tailored to the areas of accounting and financial services. Whereas in the MBA program, maybe you're taking uh, accounting, but you're also taking other areas of business too, like finance, management, media and communication, as well as marketing, operations, and strategy. So as you can see, that broad-based knowledge. With the specialized master's programs as well, um, we typically see students that are coming right out of their undergraduate career. So it is pretty normal for our students to not necessarily have a lot of working experience and are really looking to continue that educational journey. Um, maybe they've had some entry level roles and that is something that they're going to be building towards as well. Typically, the average candidate from the MS programs is looking for maybe entry to middle management after they've completed this degree. Um, you are building that professional network and for many of those who are coming into the MS program because you're new to that professional scene and working full time, you may not have the big uh, network or as strong of a network and solid of one as that of an MBA candidate. And again, that, that post master salary isn't quite going to reach the same amount as the post MBA salary. But again, the idea of business school is to help expand that trajectory in your career to really help you find, you know, that expansion and that um, upward movement as well. So it's not that you're not going to be moving upward. It's just at a different rate when you're pursuing that specialized master's. So in terms of curriculum and that format of that curriculum as well, I see we have some questions in the chat. So fantastic, please keep them coming. Um, I'll, re I'll, I'll refer back to these towards the end of our um, session here. Um, so in terms of format and curriculum, um, like I had mentioned before, the duration of the programs um, are a little bit different. The full-time MBA is going to be a full-time two-year program. Um, you're really looking to apply what you've learned in your professional setting um, in that theory plus application kind of phase. So you're really looking to see how are case studies being analyzed and how are they being applied in a business setting in real time. Um, there is a really heavy focus on how to build your leadership skills, how to ensure that you have the skills that are needed for like maybe leading and commanding a room, commanding a presentation, and really helping to drive that strategy forward. Um, this is going to be, of course, like I said before, that duration of program is a longer time commitment than that of the specialized master's program, which typically for a full-time student is between one to two years. Um, that can usually be spread out between about two to three semesters or so. It is more theory-based, and because many of our students are coming in without as much professional experience, that application in the real world may be applicable in some cases, but isn't as relevant and is not as consistent as that of, of um, the full-time MBA program. It is more focused on specific coursework. So you're really looking to build that knowledge base in a particular area of business. Can't say that enough, right? So if you're going into a marketing intelligence program, that's a specialized master's, you are building your marketing-based knowledge. You're building consumer insights. You're building that strategy. You're building that research method and how our uh, how marketing professionals go about creating campaigns and then assessing the uh, success of those campaigns. So again, it is still going to be advanced knowledge, but you're really focusing on a particular area. And like I said before, shorter time commitment as well. All right, so let's take a quick look at our MBA programs that we have available to you. So our full-time MBA, which is probably going to be the most relevant to you all if you are visa seeking. So if you're looking for an F-1 visa to study in the United States, the full-time MBA is going to provide you with the credits needed and that residency needed in order to fulfill those requirements. 
Um, typically, we're looking for or it attracts students that might be looking to pivot in a particular role, an industry, or to move up in the current function that you are in and serving in your career. Um, the program itself is about two years. It's full time. That includes day and evening classes during the week, usually Monday through Thursday. And usually we're looking at students who have like the range was three to six. So usually five years is your average there. And with it, in terms of age and maturity of our students, we're usually looking at about 28 years old. Uh, we do have professional part time programs, which are also available um, online and hybrid, um, as well as an executive education and ed the executive MBA, which is geared more for uh, individuals who have been working a substantial amount of time in a particular area or industry. So averaging about 12 years of work experience and such, having that leadership experience and really looking to enter that C-suite. So that's a very big difference between that and those who might be younger professionals pursuing that full-time MBA. Also, another little tidbit about our full-time MBA, it is also STEM designated. So if you are looking for and seeking out a, a program that will give you that OPT option, this is um, one of those programs. In our uh, full-time and professional MBA programs, you're also given the opportunity to select a primary and cross-functional concentration. So typically the concentrations come into play your second year of the full-time MBA. It is a, uh, a two-year program, but the first year being more of an onset of the advanced business study and really working towards consulting projects, preparing you for that internship between year one and year two, and really getting to know your cohort in collaborative-based group settings. Um, so you're working in classes with each other. You're really working heavily hands-on with one another in these collaborative spaces. Year two is where you select that primary concentration and begin taking those courses in those areas as well. Typically, uh, we do try to uh, warn our students against considering these concentrations to be like a major. If anything, it's to complement your education in advanced broad-based business. Um, but as you can see here, are some choices, some students mix it up or maybe they have two primary concentrations, maybe they have one primary and two cross-functional uh, concentrations. They mix and match based off of their career goals and sometimes um, where they're coming from. So maybe if you've had experience in finance and you want to dive deeper into that, FinTech might be something that really drives your interest. And then maybe you're combining that FinTech with blockchain. So, you know, different ways that you can really complement your primary and cross-functional concentrations with one another, as well as a reflection of your career interests as well. For our MS program, so here we have our suite of different MS areas. Um, we have analytics, business technology, finance, management, and professional services. Um, many of these programs are also STEM designated, allowing our students who have completed these programs that are seeking F1 visas to have that OPT time after they've completed their program. And this allows you to pursue those professional opportunities in the United States without sponsorship from that company. So this is something you would receive through um, degree completion. In our analytics suite, we have our business analytics and marketing intelligence programs. These are really great programs that utilize data and really helping to utilize data for decision-making purposes, whether it's across multiple industries like in business analytics or specifically pertaining to marketing and market research in the marketing intelligence program. In business technology, we have our information technology program, which is great if you're interested in like say, um, cybersecurity, data cleaning, um, and also working with information systems that really help move a business forward. In our finance suite, we have our two STEM designated programs in finance and quantitative finance. Our quantitative finance is likened to that of a uh, financial engineering program. So it's really giving you the back end of how uh, financial modeling um, is put together, the quantitative and mathematical practices that really help make the financial services move. So um, really understanding um, how different financial and global investments um, are moving through the world. The MS in finance program is more based on like client work and advanced finance study. Um, for those of you who may have maybe some experience of finance, but maybe are looking to really expand that, this program is a really great choice for that, especially if you're interested in like corporate finance and banking, as well as investment um, finance and investment banking as well. 
In our management suite, we have our MS in management. And I mentioned, I mentioned this program before as being um, so similar to the MBA program without being as long in duration. So if maybe you are short on the experience in terms of full-time work, but you're looking to really um, have a better understanding of broad-based business, um, the MS in management will give you a very quick MS degree in that area. So you would have the opportunity to select different areas of business to pursue um, and really giving yourself that broader based knowledge of how business works. It's not necessarily an MBA program though. Please keep that in mind. These are two very different programs in that the um, MS in management is still very much pre-experience. And the idea being that many of the students pursuing this program may have come from backgrounds that are not business oriented. So maybe uh, you are from an, an engineering background, maybe you're interested in pursuing a nonprofit uh, area or industry for your career, and you're maybe you're missing out on the business piece of that. That's where the MS in management program can come into play. Also in our management um, suite, we also have the MS in um, media management program, which is STEM designated. This is great if you've had experience working in the entertainment industry and communications, journalism, and PR, and are really looking to merge how media and businesses collide, whether it be through strategy, their media buying, media planning, and advertising. And then um, last but not least in our management um, suite, we have our online program in strategic marketing and communications. Um, these, this program is for students who, again, do not need any sort of like visa requirement. This is an online, completely online program. And working experience is actually required for this program. So really utilizing that experience, working in communications, advertising, as well as media to really better understand you know, different media practices and to really expand on that, um, on that area. Last but not least, we have our professional services suite, which includes our MS in professional accounting, which I had mentioned earlier before. It is a STEM designated program. It is going to be highly concentrated in accounting. And um, it's a really great fit for those students who might have an interest in maybe pursuing a CPA. Um, this uh, program will allow you to begin working towards uh, the New York State CPA exam. And then last but certainly not least is our MS in professional taxation. And this program has recently moved to be almost completely online. So it is a bit hybrid in that you could select some courses for accounting to kind of make it more of an in-person experience, but the majority of your courses are going to be completed online. So if you are someone who is seeking that F-1 visa, the MS in uh, tax may not be the best fit for that as it would not have the uh, residential requirements needed for you to um, maintain that visa status. All right, so we could potentially go through some of these programs here, but I think it might be more worthwhile to kind of discuss um, the application process the student experience and how this changes per program and also addressing some of your questions here. So with your student experience as an MBA student versus an MS, know that with the MBA program, it is full time, it's two years. So many of our students are really utilizing that time to um, pursue research, to pursue working with faculty on a close basis. They're also leading groups and leading organizations as well. So as a part of the Gabelli community, um, outside of the classroom experience is going to be where a lot of your networking opportunities lie. And so as you're, you know, pursuing that skills and knowledge through the classroom environment here, you have the opportunity to grow professionally and personally. Um, I'll start all the way to the right here with our 24 plus graduate student organizations. And I'm sure many other business schools that you're looking at may have something similar to provide in terms of organizations as well. Um, this is going to be more of um, a professionally based club instead of one that is more like social. The majority of our, of our clubs and organizations are really based around the industry that are based around networking and how to help move our students professionally forward. Um, if you have a startup idea or you're working towards entrepreneurial um, goals, the Fordham Foundry is a really great opportunity for you to um, enter pitch competitions to really help grow that idea through incubator um, um, options as well, too, and really having that community to support you in your ideas. So it's a really great opportunity for those of you that might be working on a startup now and are unsure as your next steps or how to find those investors. That's a really great experience. 
for those of you that might be considering the MS programs, the specialized masters, we do host um, a responsible business leadership certificate. And this is really for our specialized master's students. So because many of you are coming into the program with not as much professional experience um, and working full-time experience, um, there might be some things that you are unaware of in terms of how to collaborate in group settings, how to really rise to the occasion in your leadership um, positions and skills, and really knowing who you are and what you bring to the table. So we do a strengths finder test for all of our students that are coming into this MS program and pursuing the leadership certificate. It's a really great way for um, our students to assess who they are, what their strengths are, and then how to utilize those strengths in collaborative settings as well. Um, there is a retreat component as well, too, where you're brought together with other members of your MS program. It's a really great way to meet each other and to get to know each other. And there is a section of it that includes coaching. And as a Jesuit institution, um, you know, sustainability in business is very is, is a big topic in a way for us to um, really help instill that business with purpose, um, finding different business solutions um, in a way that is uh, cognizant of the environment and our impact and how to um, really positively impact change in our community as well. And the last but not least, we have our Responsible Business Coalition, which is probably a great way to end with um, what I just said too. It's a collaboration effort um, that um, partners with different companies and diff across different industries to really assess what business practices could be improved that are mindful towards responsible business, whether that's uh, sustainability and the environment or community impact. Um, at the moment, we are actually partnered with PBH, which is a fashion industry brand. And they, um, we actually have helped assess um, some of their fast fashion practice and really helping to ensure that, um, you know, they are looking towards sustainable fashion instead of that, of that fast fashion, uh, the fast fashion trends. So, you know, in a way, this is really building your professional experiences, but it's also a really great way to meet your um, fellow students and colleagues across all of the programs. And it's a really great way for you to feel a part of the community. So whether you're joining a club that is, um, you know, a reflection of your industry interest and career interest, or one that really reflects your cultural background, like in our Chinese Business Society, our South Asian Business Association, we even have one that is um, related to like wine tasting. Um, so <laughs> that's not necessarily a culture, but maybe it should be. Um, there are different ways for our students to get involved, to connect, and to grow professionally as well as personally too. And career development. So um, obviously with that return on investment being something that we have our eye on, the career development experience begins in orientation. And for our Gabelli MBA students, that begins during the Gabelli launch, which takes place in July, almost an entire month before the start of the classes in the semester in August. So because of that, our MBA students do certainly get that jump, right? And they've had that experience working full time and having that one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience with the Career Development Center is really important, but also preparing for that year one internship. So typically between year one and year two, our MBA students are really looking for and seeking out internship opportunities. So that will allow them to get their foot in the door. Oftentimes these companies are um, looking to hire MBA students after graduating, but if they're going to invest their money in you, they need to know that you can do the work. So oftentimes we're seeing that um, year one, year two internships, so that um, summer internship being a really great way for our MBA students to um, to, to show their skills, to really, um, you know, prove that they belong in that setting and can do good work. Um, in addition to, you know, working with our students one-on-one -on -one throughout orientation, there are other opportunities to meet, whether it's through company visits, through different networking opportunities that are specific to um, certain programs. So like the MBA program, I put on a, a networking event for students. The MS programs may put on specific networking events for their students um, and through maybe faculty and alumni connection. Um, the student organizations are another way that we see networking opportunities as well, as many of them are driven by that industry and career. 
Um, but most importantly, really having like different workshops and different ways for you as a student to really become more exposed to different practices in the industry, attending different conferences like our finance societies conference that talks about different practices in finance. Um, for those of you who may be um, women and women in business, we do have our Fordham Women in Business Society that puts on its annual conference and discusses different challenges that women face in different uh, industries across business as well. And as I mentioned before, too, we are located in New York City. So this is really given our students, whether they are MBA or MS students, that leverage that they need to be able to network, to be able to connect with different organizations and companies, and even other alum that might be located across the city. So we are located in that little yellow box there. Um, it is right next door to Central Park, and it's also right next door to the Lincoln Center Performing Arts Center. Um, we are often saying that New York is my campus and Fordham is my school. And in pursuing your graduate business degree here, it's not just about studying business, but it's also about experiencing New York City. And we are often creating different programming that allows our students to do exactly that, whether it's company visits or even just sightseeing. We really want you to explore and to enjoy the city as well. And for those of you that might be interested in applying, so um, we are kind of closing up on our fall 2023 application um, timeline. Um, typically for the full-time MBA, that's usually uh, for students that are looking to come in for the fall. So it's fall intake only. Um, we do have one last uh, deadline for our MBA students, and that would be May 26. That is for our MS students as well. So May 26 is that final deadline. If you are a visa-seeking applicant, this could be a bit of a tight squeeze because there is some time that is needed in order to ensure that you can enter into the program in a timely basis and go through that visa process as well. Um, so know that if you are planning for next fall, so maybe fall 2024, um, that we do have an application deadline in March, typically for our international students and those outside the United States that are seeking that F1 visa. Um, the application requirements are relatively the same and similar from year to year. Um, for the MBA programs, though, because our students are coming in with professional working experience, that's going to be something that you want to showcase throughout your application. There may be essay prompts that are discussing, like, how would you handle certain matters in business um, settings and in full-time work experience settings. Um, so being prepared for those questions and being prepared with, those, um, with that knowledge to share as well and how you would handle certain situations, too. In terms of your professional resume, you're not going to be leaning on the undergraduate experiences. You're really going to be talking about what you're doing currently, um, what kind of professional work you've been doing, any certificates that you've pursued, LinkedIn, um, Google Analytics, anything of the like that really emphasizes your leadership and emphasizes your professional experience as well. Regardless if you're an MS or MBA student, the official transcripts are definitely going to be needed in order to be reviewed for um, admission. And if you're coming from outside the United States, as well as the UK, Canada, and Australia, an evaluation of those transcripts would be needed after you've come um, after you've submitted that transcript too. So you can use an unofficial transcript for the review process as long as it's in English. And then following your decision, submitting that uh, transcript evaluation later on. So then that way we have um, proof that you've completed the equivalent of a four-year US bachelor's. The GMAT and GRE is actually optional for both MBA and MS programs, so I'm sure that's probably a, a huge alleviation for some of you out there. Um, you know, it's a really great idea to consider taking the GMAT or GRE if you feel that other areas of your application may be lacking in some way. You know, if you're looking to really prove your quantitative background, your quantitative skills, but maybe perhaps you've studied um, social sciences in the past, maybe your, your work experience is it, pertaining to something outside of quant, um, the GMAT and GRE can certainly help prove your potential success and academic, academic strength in that particular area as well. The executive assessment score is reserved for those students who might be pursuing um, a working professional program like the EMBA or a professional MBA. And I don't believe that pertains to this group, but I'm also happy to answer any questions you might have about that too. 
The TOEFL IELTS PTE and Duolingo scores are English proficiency scores that are required regardless if you are applying for MBA or MS programs and you are coming from a, a country that does not recognize English as its main language spoken and that is also where you had studied for your undergraduate degree. So if you are a student that may have studied in the US or at another English speaking or predominantly English speaking um, country, then the language proficiency would not be needed. Um, we do have a list, a full list of the countries that we've acknowledged are, um, you know, uh, that recognize English as a main language spoken in their country too. So that way you can double check and make sure you don't have to take that English proficiency exam. Many of these are very quick in turnaround, so it's not too cumbersome, but I do understand that, hey, every little time, every little bit counts here, right? There are different essay prompts for MS and MBA students. As I was kind of alluding before, the MBA applicants are typically answering questions that are pertaining to their experience in a professional setting, where the MS programs are really pertaining to what drove you to apply, what drove you to pursue graduate school, and what type of professional um, goals do you have for yourself and what do you envision for yourself later. If there's any gap in, say, like your experience of professional work or maybe uh, a transcript grade that you'd like to kind of um, speak up about and really give additional insight on, we do have an optional essay um, area that is reserved for those types of situations. So it's not necessarily a spot for a pur purpose of statement um, or a personal statement, um, but instead a, a space for you to provide any additional information about maybe uh, a performance that doesn't truly uh, reflect who you are as a student in a program. Professional recommendations are needed for both MS and MBA candidates, but um, being an MBA candidate having um, their professional experience themselves, we expect that the professional recommendation is going to be exactly that. Maybe perhaps a client, a previous colleague, a boss or supervisor, someone in a professional setting that can really vouch for your success in this program. Now with the MS programs, because uh, many of those applicants are coming from um, pre-experience or do not have those full-time working experiences, um, an academic recommender is still okay. Um, one recommendation is required and two is preferred. So note that if you are an MS student, you can choose either or. And if you're an MBA student, you really should be leaning towards the professional recommendations. And then last but not least, we have our admissions interview. And this interview is by invite only. It's another opportunity for our team to get to know you a little bit better and vice versa. We want you to ask us questions as well. So um, if invited, you would uh, receive an email in the uh, email address that you used for your application. And we would invite you to interview and to sign up for a time that works best for your schedule. If invited, it is part of that uh, requirement and it is something that we expect you to do in order to receive admission to the program. Um, typically, once you've submitted all of these items, it's about a four to five week turnaround for us to provide you with a decision. And so that kind of brings me to like our application deadlines. And I had already kind of mentioned this already before that May 26 is our last and final deadline um, for this fall 2023. Keep in mind that each round is a separate deadline in which we are uh, gathering your materials, reviewing them, and then also giving you a decision within. So round one has its decision release and there is a specific date scheduled on our website for each one of these. So that way you know that is the latest you'll hear back from us by. We do try to provide uh, decisions sooner if we can to ensure that you have the information you need to move forward as well. Um, typically, these dates may uh, fluctuate from year to year, but they do typically um, remain in around the same time of year, um, regardless of date. So round one may have an October date next year for the fall 2024 uh, decision deadline, or I mean application deadline, um, but that exact date might change because of leap year. All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at our transparent costs. And these are costs that are reflected over our tuition rate for this year at the moment. So we do not have our fall 2023 uh, uh, tuition rates just yet. Um, note that with the full-time MBA program, we do look at a blanket tuition, um, whereas the Master of Science programs is based off of the credit or tuition per credit. So depending on how many credits per program you're pursuing with the MS programs, that will also uh, dictate what your tuition costs would be. Um, the full-time MBA is just a blanketed cost. Those are typically four payments um, distributed across those two years. 
We do have the one-time enrichment fees for students coming into the MBA and MS programs. And we do have recurring semester fees as well. I'm sorry, sometimes the formatting um, kind of messes around with my slides and I go from computer to computer here. So um, the recurring fees and the one-time fees are all listed on our website too for your additional reference. And um, some good news that we provide too is that we do um, provide merit-based scholarship. Unfortunately, we're unable to provide scholarship to every incoming student, but every student is considered for scholarship. So at the time of admission review, we do consider you based off of your academic profile and strength of candidacy to see if you fit for that merit scholarship, whether it be for the full-time MBA or for our specialized master's programs. Um, these merit scholarships are based off of your academic and professional experiences. Unfortunately, your financial need cannot be taken into consideration for these um, scholarship offers, um, but we certainly do try to consider, you know, other areas and factors such as, you know, your academic performance and your strength of your career and um, professional background. And in addition to those uh, scholarships, we do also offer for current students graduate assistantship positions, which allows you to work within um, one of our faculty or staff offices throughout the semester, as well as we do accept um, student loans, whether they be private or federal. Um, there are a couple of private loans that we have listed on our website that do partner with international applicants who um, may not or may need a US cosigner. So instead, um, that private loan would partner with you and ensure that you wouldn't need that US cosigner to kind of act as that. And then we also have, last but not least, our continuing student scholarship opportunities. And these typically come about and are provided to you between your fall and spring semesters. Um, they are actually given to us through the generous donations of our alum. So again, I really have talked a lot about alumni today and I really can't say it enough. Like our alumni really are super supportive of our students, whether they be current or incoming as well. So um, there are some um, scholarships that are based off of that. Again, they are very limited. Um, just like the GA positions as well. These aren't necessarily things you can bank on, right, or rely on because they are competitive. There are quite a lot of students that are coming into the program that would love to alleviate that cost of attendance. So we all kind of have the same thing on our mind um, and we do have a limited budget. So just setting those expectations as transparently as possible. All right. So this is probably the best part of it all is we answer your questions. So thank you so much for submitting your questions today. Um, thank you for joining me. As I mentioned, my name is Christina Sikowski. Um, I oversee our marketing intelligence program. And these are also my wonderful colleagues who oversee their programs as well too. So if you're interested in the full-time MBA, uh, my colleague Dylan Mosenball is going to be your guy. He is our Senior Associate Director of Graduate Admissions and Recruitment, and he oversees the full-time MBA admissions process. Um, otherwise, if you have interest in other MS programs, I'm also joined by some of my um, admissions officer colleagues too here as well. So let's take a look here. So it looks like our first question was, do you have a program in construction or in the environmental area? Um, unfortunately for our business school, we do not have any programs that um, go into construction, but we do have a real estate program that is located in um, a different school of study and a professional studies. Um, as much as I like to say I love Fordham and I know a lot about Fordham, <laughs> there are some programs I don't know about. So um, there's a chance that maybe our institution offers that program, um, but um, or maybe the real estate program has an environmental uh, sustainability area or concentration, but I'm not certain of it. So unfortunately, in the business school, which I could certainly vouch for inside and out, um, we don't necessarily have a program that is specifically in construction. But that, that's not to say that you can't utilize an MBA or specialized master's degree to work on a skill set or knowledge that you can apply towards construction. Um, but it really depends on what you're looking for in terms of degree. So um, if you're still kind of considering that and aren't sure, um, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to work with you to kind of suss out what might be the best fit for you um, and how maybe a graduate degree can really help you. Um, thank you so much, Christina. And from the same participants, we actually got a second question. Um, she was asking, um, since she's in uh, an internship now and she will be done by August the 30th, um, will it be too late to apply to a program um, considering this uh, 
commitment she has? Yeah, I would probably say so. So our orientations begin um, August 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then for Gabelli launch for the MBA program, it does begin in July. And that's definitely not something you'd want to miss if you are an MBA applicant. Um, so I would suggest considering either if you are an MS applicant, we do have some spring intake for some of the programs. Um, otherwise, maybe looking for the next following fall. Thank you so much. And she's also asking if you are helping students uh, find a housing in New York. Yeah, so we do have a couple of resources and tips and tricks that we provide our students. We do offer graduate housing to our students as well. Now, because we share our Lincoln Center Manhattan campus with a couple other graduate schools, we can't guarantee that every incoming business student um, will have on-campus housing, but in fact, many of our students don't necessarily go that route. Many are pursuing off-campus housing through apartments, um, whether it's living in a different part of Manhattan or in a different borough as well in New York City. It's pretty commonplace to see some of our students commuting in from like say Brooklyn or Queens or even New Jersey, believe it or not. I think many people are thinking, oh my God, New Jersey is another state away, but it's actually just one river over. <laughs> so it's really close. Uh, we have some tips and tricks um, we don't necessarily have a real estate broker on campus, but we will provide you as much information as possible to help guide you on that search. Thank you so much. And to move forward to the other questions, and of course, uh, if the participants uh, still have any more questions, they are welcome to write into the Q&A box. Um, so a participant was asking if you can give us some examples of student startups born uh, through the Fordham Foundry. Yeah, so at the moment, um, I do not have a list in front of me, but I'm happy to provide that afterwards as well. I'm sure we have some information on our website, too, about what um, startups have begun. Um, oftentimes, it's students who are applying in like a competition type of setting, and they're provided uh, in investment and in, in, um, investor fees. So they, they're given um, a check to help grow that company. But I can definitely look into that and kind of give you more of a list that um, maybe you can share with the participants after. Perfect. Sounds great. Um, so to move to the next question, and I do see a couple ones we have already answered during the presentation, so hopefully uh, we can get back to these as a wrap up to the event, but a participant is asking if uh, you can give some more insight into what are the most in-demand MS programs uh, at the moment. Yeah, what's the most in-demand um, MS programs? I would say business analytics is really popular, marketing intelligence as well. I think at the end of the day, utilizing data to make decisions is a skill set that many um, employers are looking for. So being able to do that across multiple industries is really ideal. So I would say some of our more popular in-demand MS programs would be um, business analytics, uh, marketing intelligence, and actually MS and finance is also relatively popular for those who are looking to break into and to advance into the financial services and in finance. Perfect. So a participant is asking how many international students are there? Perhaps you can share that instead with us. Yeah, absolutely. There are quite a lot of international students here at our um, institution. Um, being a global city, I feel like um, we attract quite a lot of students from all over the world, and we're very proud of that. Um, I would say that there's probably approximately maybe 60% of our population is international, believe it or not. And um, that's reflective of both our MS and MBA program. So each program might have a different representation of that. Um, you know, a lot of a great example of that might be our MS and accounting program. Uh, many of our international students may not be looking for that New York CPA, which is perfectly understandable. And because of that, that program may have more domestic students than international. But we do see quite a lot of students that might be pursuing, um, you know, our, our business analytics, marketing intelligence programs that might be coming from outside the U.S. Um, typically, some of our more popular areas that students are coming from um, range in Europe. We've seen quite a few students from Italy, believe it or not, recently. Uh, South America, we've seen students from Chile, Peru, uh, and even in Central America, too, in Mexico. Uh, we see a lot of students from India as well as uh, China, and some students even from Canada as well, too. So it's, you know, we're happy to see so many different um, students from so many different parts of the world represented in all of our programs. 
Sounds great. So rest assured that whichever country you are uh, considering to apply from, you will be able to integrate and make friends and socialize and make the most out of this experience. And of course, I mean, what better place in the world uh, other than New York to do that? Um, so um, speaking of stellar um, experiences as international students, uh, a participant uh, was asking what student services can they expect once they graduate from a master's or an MBA? That's a really great question and one you should ask any school you're interested in pursuing. So um, our career services do not come to an end after you graduate. That is something that you will continuously receive if you need to come back to us for any help, any assistance, any guidance, any review, any mock interviews. These are all different uh, resources available to you. Um, additionally, too, as part of your tuition and fees, we do also have an alumni fee. So if you're in the New York City area, that alumni fee will allow you to actually um, audit a course. So as like a professional development opportunity, um, you would audit that course for non-credit. And I do believe it's for a very, very discounted rate. So then that way um, you're able to sit through a class and still kind of build that knowledge if there's maybe a nuance or a new area in your um, industry that is being developed. So uh, we, we do try to encourage that like sense of lifelong learning. We do also have those support services in place while you're here and then also afterwards too. Perfect. Thank you so much, Christina. So uh, to move forward with the last questions, a participant is asking if a graduate at Fordham can continue working in the U.S. after graduating. Yeah, and I mean, um, we do have resources in place to help guide international students with that search. It can be complicated. It can be complex. It can be a lot of things. And just know that you have support throughout that and resources along the way. You have a career development advisor who does have experience in that um, industry and network it's, um, themselves. So they're really talking to you based off of what they first handedly have experienced, what their network has experienced in that industry too. Um, so we do have exclusive um, listings as well as different company visits and different ways to really put yourself out there. Um, we really do try to rest on the idea of how can we help support you to build the skills that you need to not only land the job after graduation, but jobs afterwards and moving forward throughout your career. So really preparing you to be able to present yourself in different interview settings and really helping you to be able to do so from time to time, um, whether you're moving up and throughout your career as time progresses. Um, you know, many of our students, and it depends on the program, and it certainly depends on the experience of the student coming into that program too. With varying um, amounts of experience professionally, it's really hard to say like how many out of all of our programs are students finding placement rate right? because so many of our students may not have that full-time job um, experience requirements. So many of our MS students are coming in with no experience at all. And so when they're looking for a position, it might be a different, a whole different ball game than that of the MBA student who is coming in with experience, so coming in with leadership experience. So the strategies that an MBA student is going to take in order to find the year one scholar, uh, internship and then the uh, year two job placement is going to be a lot different than that of the specialized master student who is looking for maybe professional internships after uh, graduation or other entry level full time positions as well. So we do have resources in place to help guide you through whether you're an MS student or an MBA, but note that that process is different depending on what you bring to the table first and then also the program you're pursuing as well. Thank you so much for the thorough answer, Christina. Um, so a participant was asking about the payment options. Uh, I don't believe we mentioned those, but if we did, apologies. I think it may be of interest for participants who may have joined later. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, favorite options. I'm sorry. I, I... Payment options. Payment so, options. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so in terms of payment options, um, we do accept, um, you know, like different wire transfers, but we do also accept like private loans. Um, we do have uh, federal loans that we accept as well. 
Um, we do also offer uh, merit-based scholarship to students coming into the program. All are considered, but not everyone is awarded those scholarships. So just keep in mind that they are very um, selective and competitive. And typically applying as early on as possible will really help improve your chances of receiving a merit-based scholarship in your admissions letter. There's no separate application for the scholarships um, uh, coming in for admission, but as a current student, we do also have applications for the GA or graduate assistantship opportunities um, on campus. So you would be working um, on the Lincoln Center campus with either faculty or other administrative offices here at Gabelli too. And um, we do also have um, our continuing student scholarships, which are actually um, funded through our alumni, the generous donations of alumni. Uh, typically, they are very niche and the requirements can be um, a bit restrictive at times. So it is a bit of a, a competitive kind of um, scholarship opportunity. And then, like I said before, um, we do have private and uh, public loans that we do um, accept. The private loan lenders, um, which are featured on our website, um, are very helpful in that there are some that um, really do help our international student populations, as many international students may need, like say a U.S. co-signer for certain loan lenders. Some of the loan lenders we have um, on our website do not require that, so it's a little bit easier of a process for our international population. Perfect. So we have a question from Paolo. Um, I will get to that since it's more specific. So he's asking whether business analytics can be somehow considered as a lines for people working in the industry or construction sector. Yeah, I mean, potentially, it really depends, right? Because with business analytics, it's not so much about learning the industry, it's about learning the function within that industry. So with business analytics, it touches on how to apply data utilization across finance, across marketing, across media, across multiple different types of business. So you don't necessarily have to pursue um, you know, if you already feel that you have that industry knowledge of construction, but you're looking to kind of the plug and play with business analytics, then you could certainly do that. And if anything, I would suggest taking a look at the curriculums for courses and programs that you're considering to ensure that the classes that are offered are really going to help support um, the different areas of business of business you're looking to specialize in. So if data utilization is um, something you want to learn more about and learning how to like apply that in construction, um, that's fine. That's definitely something that I think business analytics will help with. But if you're looking for a degree that's going to give you like more construction insight, that's going to be more heavily based off of that as a foundation, then that business analytics program may not be the best fit for that. But if you're looking to really work on specific skill set, that analytics degree, I think, could be good. That, that could be a good choice. Perfect. Thank you so much, Christina and Paolo. We hope that was uh, of help. Uh, so to get to the last question, we have uh, a participant is asking if you offer visa support. And I know we touched uh, on this briefly. Thank you so much. Yeah, Christina. Of course, my pleasure. And um, this is definitely one of those questions that we get every year, and it is certainly a top concern of our international students. So, of course, we definitely understand that. Um, as an incoming student uh, pursuing that visa process, we do offer support. We have an Office of International Student Services that helps guide you through the visa process from the start to finish and then even after. So when you're applying for, say, OPT, after you've completed the program, you would also work with our Office of International Student Services who are here to support you. If during the program you wish to travel and you wish to maybe go home for the holidays or to leave the country to maybe explore other areas in North America, we're here to support you to ensure that your visa is up to date, that you're um, doing everything you're supposed to do that um, upholds that visa requirement and support you in those needs. As an incoming student, our office will actually supply you with information regarding the AFCO. That's the Application for Certificate of Eligibility. And that's that form that you probably have heard of that uh, requires you to submit like financial documents and statements proving that you have the funds for the program. Um, our office will work with you on that individually actually um, to gather those documents and to process that prior to the I-20. Um, so that is something that we provide. And then we also have an additional office that's here for your support throughout the duration um, of your enrollment here. 
We do also have international student support for career services as well, as we understand that 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 search can be a lot more complicated and complex for students who may not have the OPT or may not have the STEM designated OPT. So how to go about that, how to register for that as well too. We assist you with all of that. That's great. Thank you so much, Christina, for all the information that you shared with the participants. And thank you so much uh, to those of you who stuck with us till the end. Of course, if you joined later on uh, or if you had to drop out early, um, do not worry, you will get an email with the recording of this event and, of course, uh, the uh, presentation that we just shared with you. So you will have access to all the information that has been shared and you will be able to make all your final considerations on which program to choose and how to move forward uh, based on the uh, information at hand. So without further ado, Christina, thank you so much for your time today and for taking all the questions uh, during our Q&A session. And to those of you who want to uh, request their certificate of attendance by DocCity, you can pop an email um, to a webinar at DocCity.com, specifying which event you are uh, writing for, and we'll be happy to share that with you. So without further ado, thank you all so much for uh, your presence here today. And of course, uh, we hope to see you uh, again for the next event in partnership with Fordham. Um, of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Fordham uh, School of Business. Uh, you will have all the uh, contacts and all the in information to do so. So thank you all so much. And I hope that everyone will stay safe. Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Christina. Bye-bye.